So we were going through some Font Foundry websites looking at some type ideas. Um, there are a few here you can see from uh, House Industries which are quite nice. And it was this sort of more playful idea that we wanted to go with. Um, so having a look at a few different variations. Um, some free ones from Defont, excellent resource site. But it was this Candy Script font which really captured our imagination. And uh, this was on Veer, which, as you probably know, is a really great site. So, yeah, it's, you can see it here, some examples. It's very, very playful. Lots of character in there. But the really great thing about the font is that it has a lot of opportunities for customization. It's an open type font. And uh, because of that, it's got a number of different glyphs. For, for each character. Um, now here's an example. Um, you can see all the different um, options for for each character, which is, is quite a big, broad range and lots to choose from. It really means you can customize um, the, the logo to look quite different, even though you're using the same font. And it's great um, in terms of looking like, looking different from other companies that might have used it. So you can see uh, quite a few examples there, and this is a really helpful little sheet I just laid out for myself, so I could quickly reference reference them and take different uh, characters and glyphs where I needed them. Um, so great, you know, I'll take that C and uh, pop it in a new document there, for instance, which is very handy to have. Um, but anyway, um, the actual font itself, this is how it comes. Let's just change that to Candy Script. Okay, so this is how the font comes, which is nice and what you saw before, but we really wanted to customize it, we really wanted to go to town with it. You can see on this sheet there's some ones. So there's the initial one how, as it comes the original untouched version. Then we've got a slightly more regular version and this was cool because it's very curvy and it's lots of playfulness but it's yeah it's a bit uneven and I think that makes it a bit too cartoony. Um, I mean I did this on purpose just to see different versions. I really like this art but yeah it looks forced. It doesn't work that well with the S. And this is a bit more rigid, it's not quite so, there's a bit more sort of uniform baseline going on here. Um, so, yeah, people kind of enjoying those ideas and so develop them a bit more. Try to cut it down a little bit so it wasn't too cartoony. So we've removed a lot of the flourishes here. And this is the one that everyone really liked. The mixture of playful and relaxed and friendly without being too freeform and crazy. And there's a bit of an experiment here going on with the S. It's not very neat at the moment. Um, it's just a quick rough version, but I thought there was a little bit too much space between the S and the R, so I've closed it up with this kind of tail leading in there. After much deliberation, we decided that we were going to use a strapline, and eventually decided that we were going to use our existing strapline, which is Creativity with Integrity. Uh, even though we're changing the company name, uh, we felt that that still really held true. For those of you who've been uh, following us on Flickr, um, you'll see that we've actually been uploading some of the ideas here, and uh, especially the this idea of a C stamp, a C standing on its own, separate from the logo. Let's just wait for these to load up. Stuff like this. Just the idea of having something that would stand on its own, and that the C from from Candy Script, one of the C's, lent itself very, very well to that. And again experimenting with this idea of the stamp. We did start playing around with putting that 
as the dot of the eye because we needed something that made it a bit more like a logo something a bit a bit more visual than just having the text in, in the font um, so we started playing around with a few of them you can see, yeah, and these are very rough by the way it's very simple things just to give it a bit of personality and I actually returned to the speech bubble idea which quite liked but is a speech bubble a bit too much like a, a chat client we thought that maybe it was so then we thought about actually a thought bubble now a thought bubble is quite cool because unlike a speech bubble which is something a bit more specific a thought can be an idea and sort of represents creativity and experimentation and covers a multitude of sins basically so that's something that we quite liked here we are just trying it down the bottom so it doesn't jar too much at to the top but it just looks silly and doesn't really work with the eye so where next after that? well we're experimenting with the thought bubble idea making it a little less literal and developing that whole idea further but you're um, going to have to wait until next episode for that one, I'm afraid. So tune in in a couple of days' time. Cheers.